Hello, today we're going to be looking at my Windows 11 configuration, specifically the things that I've added to hopefully make it look nice. So it's no secret that Windows is hard to configure, especially when comparing it to something like Linux. Uh, but over the years, I've found a couple different things that have made my setup a lot better looking than the traditional Windows setup, at least in my opinion. So today I'm going to be showing you those things that I've found that will hopefully help you on your configuration journey. So as a developer, probably the most important thing for me is my terminal. And you're looking at it right now. This is the terminal that I use. I use Westerm. Westerm is cross-platform and it was written in Rust, by the way. It being cross-platform is really, really nice because it means that I can have one configuration file across all of the different operating systems that I work on because I work on Windows and Linux. So that's really, 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 really nice. Additionally, it's configured in Lua, which means that I, you know, since I know Lua, it's really easy to work with. And you can also add Add, you know more complex configurations if you you know need it I don't really do that too much I just have a sing simple single file configuration uh, but it's really really nice and so we can actually open that up here so we have my dot west term dot Lua that's just in the user and as you can see it is extremely extremely messy and that's because I've just been like testing things out and removing things and I comment things out just in case maybe later I want to use them um, but you know you can kind of just get a feeling for what this configuration looks like so my configuration file is 200 lines, but as you can see, most of that is just comments and some color overrides here. Just to like kind of briefly go over some things. So we, this all this does is just return a table and the table has some things like you can pick the you know rendering API you wanna use, the like max FPS, the cursor style, things like that. Uh, but you can also add cool um, extra like key bindings and stuff. So here I have some key bindings for like splitting panes. So I can like split a pane here and then I can do like control nine and I can, I can teleport to that one and I can make a like a, I can make a vertical one here same deal you know now I can just teleport between these panes and so this is really really nice because I do not have um, access to tmux in windows unless I use um, the windows subsystem for linux but I don't want to do that because I typically make like graphical GUI games and that doesn't usually behave with WSL anyways. So yeah, we've got some cool shortcuts here for navigating panes and then I've got some color overrides here um, and I have some other little things. So for me, I have disabled uh, window decorations and the reason I'm able to do that is because I use a window manager. More about that later, but it basically just adds a little bit of extra real estate to this. So if I really wanted to like full screen this and get the maximum amount of space I can now do that and I don't have an annoying title bar in the way I also have the ability to toggle the opacity and that's because while you know having a transparent terminal is cool sometimes it can be distracting especially in long typing sessions so I like to be able to toggle it on and off for that reason so that's about it for the terminal let's go ahead and get into probably the biggest part of my configuration which is my window manager um, so the window manager that I use is called uh, Glaze Window Manager. It's a bit of an interesting name here. It's on GitHub here, fully open source. And it was basically just kind of like a drop in for me. Like I didn't really add too much into it. Um, I just changed the highlight color and stuff. But basically this window manager gives me cool shortcuts for, you know, focusing and like resizing windows and all that sort of stuff with, you know, controls very, very similar to i3 if you've ever used it on Arch. And I really, really enjoy that kind of workflow because I'm a Vim user and I like to stay on the keyboard. So this has been amazing for me. Um, there's only been a couple small things that I've changed. I've changed the like color of the border and I've changed the keys. I've moved them over from, I think it was JKL semicolon. I moved that over to HJKNL because that's what I'm used to. Um, and so other than that, I actually haven't changed anything about that. Now, as far as the top bar goes, for the top bar, I'm actually using the one that was built in with Glaze Window Manager. Whenever you install it, it will prompt you to integrate this thing called Z bar. And you can click on it here and see the Z bar. Um, and this is basically just a little like lightweight tool for creating these top bars for things. And I've basically kind of just left it as it is. The only things that I've changed is I've changed the opacity of the background and I've changed a couple of the different like highlighting colors because Originally, I think it was a bit more opaque. I didn't really want that. I want it to be very, very subtle. And so I have changed it to this. Now, this wasn't an automatically, this isn't a 100% perfect uh, option because it's Windows, things are buggy. You know, for some reason, 
although it's called Windows, it has a hard time managing the windows on the screen. And so sometimes when I like unplug a monitor and plug it back in, my all my windows will be like completely messed up. Or like if I if I create like a new tab, sometimes it just won't scale correctly. That time it did because I'm recording and it wants to make me seem like I'm lying. But sometimes whenever you open a window, it just like opens in a random spot or it just crashes. And sometimes the uh, Z bar also gets kind of weird. It gets kind of cut off, but it's very, very easy to fix all that stuff. You can just restart this thing with just a simple like keyboard shortcut. So I don't really have any complaints on my end that are like terrible. That's basically the bulk of the setup here. Now I said earlier that I prefer to have a keyboard centric workflow because I'm a Vim user and I'd like to never use the mouse. And so part of that is being able to create my, you know, instances of applications without having to mouse over to my taskbar and like click on something like there. I don't really want to be doing that kind of stuff. So instead I use something called power toys. Uh, but you might be asking like, why would you need this? Because there is actually, um, you know, you can press the windows key and it's popping up off screen because I'm recording on a different monitor, um, but it will basically allow you to search for things. So let me see if I can do it here. So I can search for things here. I can say like Wes term and it will show my terminal here. But my main problem with this is one, all this junk over here, we got Copilot and all this crap. I don't want any of this. And two, um, for some reason, it really likes to open up Microsoft Edge. Like even if I have an app and I search for it, it will open up Edge like nine times out of 10. So I don't want to do that. I only want to open apps. And so for that, I have found that there is a really, really cool tool from the Power Toys that lets me actually search for things kind of like the Spotlight Search does in Mac OS. So I can just like click and click on Western here, press enter. It'll open on the wrong window, of course. And then I can move it over here, retile it. And there you go. So you get the idea. It's kind of just like a slight quality of life improvement. And it keeps me from having to open up Microsoft Edge, which is always a plus. Now, that's basically the bulk of my configuration. But there are a couple other things. Um, this background is linked in the description. I do get a lot of requests for where this background is. And so it is there. Additionally, my taskbar is transparent. And that's thank Thanks to Translucent TB, which you can install on the Microsoft Store. But to be honest, I basically never use it ever because I can just search for things like this and I can just like move things around with the cursor. So it doesn't really matter too much to me, but it is there just in case I do want to mouse over to it for some reason. With that being said, that about concludes my configuration video. Uh, if you found this useful at all, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you are like an, a developer or just, you know, someone that wants to get in the community of tech, consider joining my Discord where I have a nice growing community of people and it would be a great place to talk about this kind of stuff. Also consider supporting my Patreon so I can continue making videos like this. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day. See ya.